Signals application. So we have a dashboard called Signals Web Performance. So we plot here our LCP, the TTFB, the largest contentful paint, time to first byte, first contentful paint, and first input delay. These are averaged over the last time period range that we are considering. This gives you a brief idea about how your application is performing at particular instant. Can you explain to us like what's the difference between, for example, LCP and FCP? Explain what are the terms you have, which you have used here. Definitely. So coming to the LCP first, largest contentful paint. Like this is a core web vital decided by the Google standards. Now, why specifically largest contentful paint and what it actually means? When at a particular instant of a web page load, does the largest item in that viewport is rendered? Let's say we have 20 different images, five different text boxes in our web page. Let's say the first text box was the largest text box. So when was that exactly rendered? That is how we calculate the largest contentful paint. So earlier this was being referenced by first contentful paint. First contentful paint might not make sense in a lot of the cases. Let's say a loader appeared or let's say a small heading appeared, but users are not interested in that heading or the loaders, but they're actually interested in the main content of the page. So that's where LCP comes into the picture and it uh, supersedes the FCP. Moving from LCP, the FCP we oh, just so LCP considered... should always be higher than the FCP. Uh, yes, correct. Yes, the first will always come first, and the largest comes after the first. Might be the first one is the largest, or might be some nth uh, element is the largest. Got it. So this comprises your LCP and FCP. Coming to the uh, first input delay, performance of your web is measured in three terms. Loading states is being handled by largest contentful paint, first contentful paint, and second comes is interactivity. How interactive your web pages? Let's say a uh, web page loaded, your largest uh, element loaded, that's well in some actions. Your main JavaScript thread might be blocked by 100 other things that are happening in your application. Might be 20 API calls are going, some tables are being rendered. So that makes your main thread unusable. Your main thread might be free from some minor instances in the middle from where you might initiate a user action. Let's say user tries to scroll down or user tries to type something into an input box. So, but if the main thread is busy, it'll take some time to respond back to the user. Difference of that response time back to the user is called first input delay. Ideally, your first input delay should be less than 100 milliseconds. Uh, these are the standards set by Google. We covered uh, loading state, interactivity, and now we'll look towards our visual stability. Let's say a user loads a web page. Now, once a web page is being loaded, there should not be any content layout shift that is measured using CLS. Like we have plotted some of the CLS graphs here. CLS uh, means uh, cumulative layout shift. Let's say you are rendering a web page that has different buttons and an ad comes into picture and your checkout is replaced by cancel or you can mistakenly buy an order or cancel an order which was not an intended user action. The measure of the CLS gives you data like how frequently your layout shifts. As the uh, browser calculates your content layout shift how frequently the start position of your elements changing with respect to some other element coming into the picture of UI. These are the few basic core web vitals that we leverage. These are being used to determine website performance. So we can use signals to render such data on our dashboards. So how are we rendering this data? We are leveraging the async gauge uh, meter from the open telemetry specification to render the data on the screen. We are capturing data on different kinds of pages. We are averaging that data out and plotting on the dashboard. So these are some How are you getting data. that data? How are you getting the async data in that meter? Are you using any custom yeah, metrics? So we use a web vitals li library that exposes us all these core web vitals data. Once we get that data, we have our own uh, open delimiter instrumentation setup. We create a custom meter. We expose it to our application via meter provider. And once our meter provider gets that data, we exp uh, we ingest that data into the signals and we visualize this comes in the averaging out data. And this is our main chart. We tried different strategies to get out different data. Like we tried our application with slow 3Gs. We tried our application with 2Gs, fast 3Gs and without no throttling. And we ended up with different results. All these core web vitals have different web standards specified by Google. Let's say under two milliseconds of LCP is good performance. Under four, mil, four seconds of it might need some improvement. And above six seconds, very critical. You need to fix it right away. So hmm. we can plot those thresholds in our Signals application. Let's say we'll go to the edit of the dashboard. We have the last one hour of data here present. You can define your thresholds here. Let's say two milliseconds or 
five seconds, we might look into it. It needs some improvement. Critical is above 10 seconds. These are not standard values. These are just for depicting purposes. You get all your data plotted here. Your graph is going above needs improvement here. That means you might go and look into it. Sometimes you get a good performance out of it. So depending on these data, you can create your thresholds and you can decide your Y axis unit. My unit is milliseconds or seconds, and you can define different matrices here. Now, after this, it crosses critical threshold. You want to set up an alert for the same. You might not want to come back to this page again and check, is it above critical or below critical? So you can simply go and create an alert for the same from here itself. You can leverage the same query. You can define your y-axis units, here, maybe seconds or milliseconds or nanoseconds. Let's say we define it as milliseconds. We can define when a particular rule, it exceeds above the threshold, maybe once all the times on an average or in total. If it at least once exceeds your threshold in the last 24 hours or in the last five minutes, we want to, let's say it increases four seconds. We want to be alerted about the same. We can select the severity of the alert. You can select your notification channels where you want to get notified for the same. And you'll be notified in your Slack channel for the subsequent alert threshold crosses. You can see our alerts like this. And when the alert is being firing, you can see the firing alerts as well. Got it. So, so the, the dashboard which you have shown, uh, the red line, yellow line, and the green line, these are just a visual indicator as of now. Yes. They are not yeah. actually firing any alerts. So these are just visual indicators to show you that you need to maybe look into it. And then if you want, you can set up alerts, which is the next step if, if you want to get alerted based on that. Okay. For a better example, let's consider somebody from the growth team or somebody who is actively monitoring our website performance, right? Because the website is one, um, consider Facebook and that your landing page where users are viewing data and everything, uh, there's threads and everything which is shown up and the performance of this falls. And because of this, users are not able to uh, use the application properly, right? So these alerts with these metrics, what you can do is like set up alerts and there would be somebody actually uh, actively monitoring these things or be alerted when there's a drop in performance and people can decide whether to roll back due to a previous release. These metrics help you with respect to your application performance. With signals, you can set up uh, an observability alert around it. Apart from this, also there's a lot of lot more metrics specific to front end, which you need, you can observe, right? You can use a lot of web provided APIs to measure your performance. Uh, you can also use Lighthouse score. Every single release when we do for our main website, I want my Lighthouse score to be optimal and it, it need not drop. As we don't control a lot of elements on the UI with respect to our main websites sometimes because there are ads coming in, probably there's new set of components which we have built, which we have not tested for a particular performance level. We can set alerts around this and get notified and make our decisions whether to continue with that or like roll back or fix it as soon as possible. So there are a number of uh, metrics which you can send from your application specific to front end that help you observe your uh, web application performance. For example, somebody monitor their lighthouse scores using signals. Yes, they can do that. So if there's a library to uh, generate a lighthouse score for a specific page, and you can use the same uh, methodology to report that and keep a monitor around it. You can uh, you can create a panel around it and set up thresholds, set up alerts. And if there's a drop, we can, with sending additional attributes along the way, we can know that what release caused this problem and then mm. make sure that if you want to go back to the previous release or fix it as soon as possible. Got it. This could be very interesting. Like I remember in earlier days, we used to monitor our Lighthouse score for Signal's website quite proactively. And this would have been very useful for us if we can get alerted if the Lighthouse score dropped below a certain level. Yeah. Cool, Vikranti, you can, if you have more things to share. Yeah, sure. So another thing that I like pretty much in the application right now is Let's say I'm seeing a graph and at some point of time, I see a critical thing happening or some spike happened. So I want to know more about it. In a general overview, I'm not getting much detailed picture about what happened particularly here. So we support this graph. You can zoom in into that particular section where you want to visualize what happened. You can look into specific details around, okay, around 1140 to 1145, some spike happened. 
this might be the time you release something new this might be the time a new tenant got added this might be the time some x event might have happened that have caused this this helps you limit where when exactly what happened and you can look for further details about what were the metrics at this particular point of time this it helps a lot in debugging skills uh, i think what would have been even more interesting is can if somebody can click that spike which i have seen and go on to say exceptions or the infra where it is hosted that would have been like really useful i think right. Right. for example uh, here if you click on this one i think we have something similar for application metrics where you can click this and go to traces if you have something similar here i think that would help users debug to the next level why is this happening like we know now something is wrong but now users have to manually take this time and go to the next step to figure out like what's wrong if we can show that to them here only that would have been useful maybe this is something food for thought for you guys to work on next so we can select our custom label here as per the attributes and add some details here but definitely like navigating to that particular place where something happened would be really helpful